Let's go over alternating loop or alt loop and the different techniques you could apply using alternating loop. So I had this whole sample chopped up and this is one of the slices right here and I have alternating loop applied. And at a certain point, it starts reversing. Let's jump to sample edit mode. And then the program section of sample edit. So you'll be able to see with the playback indicator it plays and then it starts going backwards. Okay, now you could turn on alternating loop right here from sample edit just by tapping your pad and then going here to loop and turn it from off to alternate. You also obviously have forward and reverse, but the alternate or alt is new. But truthfully, I really don't like applying alternate loop from sample edit mode. I prefer to add it from program edit. So let's go ahead and let's jump to program edit mode. So the thing about alternate loop is you won't even hear it unless you push your play pad mode to note on. So I'll give you for instance here. See, this is on note on, so you'll hear it. But if it was one shot, it'll stop right when the sample's done. And you won't hear the alternating loop. So very important. And also why I like to set all this up in program edit is it's just really easy. If I wanted to put the alternating loop on this drum pad like I did, simply go to program edit mode under pad loop, put it to alternate, and under sample play, put it to note on. And then you've created your alternating loop. So now let me show you a technique with alternating loop. It could be used to kind of simulate a pad sustaining or a sample sustaining sounding longer because it'll start to play and then obviously it starts playing back in reverse. So that could be really useful. I'll give you a demonstration right now. Let me play this beat. So when it's alternate looping, there's no space right here. It's just a seamless, you'll hear, Right around here would be where the sample would fall out if I had it not on alternating loop. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna take off alternating loop and now listen back. See right there, it drops off right to end. Drop out. So let me go ahead and turn that alternating loop back on. how it sustains it right at that part. It bridges the gap. And that is probably the most practical use of alternating loop. Also, what's really nice to do is to apply an alternating loop to an entire program by using the all feature here in edit zones. Okay, so I'm gonna select all for this program. I'm gonna put everything to note on and I'm gonna put the pad loop to alt. So it's done to every single sample in that program. Okay, so now from sample edit, let's go ahead and show you these alternating loops. So at this point, the biggest drawback of alt loop is that you have to have your play pad set to note on. So it only plays as long as your fingers down on the play pad. It's not really the ideal setting for chop samples, but I'm gonna show you a way to around it so you can get your alt loop created paths or programs to play out like they were one shot. So all you gotta do to simulate one shot is go here to your amp envelope. And what we're gonna do, first of all, make sure your sustain is kicked all the way up to 127, and then put your release all the way up to like 120, and now, the pads are playing the same way it would as a one shot. At this point, we have what I consider to be the ideal settings to use when using alt loop. So this is a technique that helps you sustain every one of your samples that you chopped in a program all in one swipe. So by having the sample play backwards in this alternating loop, it'll buy you about a beat or two of space inside your bar to simulate a note being extended.